Hello everybody, welcome to Joe Pace Racing and I am upgrading from this to something brand new in these boxes right here. From Track Racer, it's the TR80 Lite uh, with a GT seat. What I used to have was the next level racing wheel stand light. Um, I'm not going to be replacing the wheel or the pedal set yet. That'll go straight onto that once this is complete. And one day I will upgrade the wheel. But right now I'm focusing more on just having a better form of immersion with the seat and a, and a rig, hopefully. So wish me all the best. Hopefully you can sit around and watch the assembly of this rig in its many bits and pieces. As you can see, I've even gone for the um, the seat belts because I might fall out of the seat while I'm racing. But anyway, we'll see how we go. So what I've got here, I've got a whole bunch of assembly books and um, yeah, there's about 38 pages, even for the seat belt, there's a different location for anchoring points and even there's a tower 80 light guide i've split into two halves because the staple wouldn't go through the um 28 pages so we've got 28 pages for these two and there's about yeah there's 10 pages for that yep sorry it's sideways and let's whack this together and start racing as soon as i possibly can That's very dangerous, I won't be using that. I'm gonna to have to use that for something later on. Let's go with this. I decided to go with a smaller knife, so that way I will not cut myself or damage any components. Wow. So on here, there's a um, barcode that you scan by the looks of it for the assembly guide, but I've already gone ahead and downloaded the manual, so we'll move along. Thanks, Track Racer. Or I'll... Oh, by the way, this is not uh, sponsored in any way. Um, I'm not getting any money for this. Uh, I'm just trying a new rig by a new company. Not a new company, but a company that's been around for a while, but for me, they're new to use, obviously. And let's give it a shot. I'll leave that up there. And from here on, it's going to be a lot of unpackaging and unwrapping and a lot of uh, boxes to put away. So here we have all these pieces. Just make this out of the way for now. Patching good bits in good nick. Track racer sticker. There's a few metal shavings in here. In here we have our tools and clips for wires. Keep your wires all tidy, wire management, very important. Yeah. Is that middle? Yeah. And 
this looks like this is the, the plate. Oh, here we go. It's pretty heavy. Wow. We've got it's 11 kilos. It's a very heavy set plate. I like that. All right. Not too bad though. With the metal shavings. So here I'm just unboxing all the parts, all the little components, the uh, M8 bolts, the T-nuts, all those things, just making sure that everything's there and everything does check out. As you see when I give it the big old. And now I will start to slowly unwrap the, well it looks quick here but it's actually pretty slow, uh, the, the main uh, frame that will make up the main part of the of the rig itself and here I'm putting in the the T-nuts and I'm not actually putting them into position just yet just getting them prepared to secure the um, the caster wheels to the bottom of the main frame because that way it'll give me an opportunity to make it a lot easier to roll around once it's being put together and it'll be crazy to complete the whole thing and then put the wheels on unless well not absolutely crazy but you know you have to light on its side and makes it a little bit more difficult so it's easier to do it this way now i'm going to orientate the rear wheels obviously facing outwards but i'm going to orientate the front ones facing inwards just purely for the storage location um because i'm going to put it between that cabinet that you see in front of me and the wall and i don't want to have to push the cabinet out too far um, across the room and that way it, the wheel the front wheels won't um, bump up against anything and damage anything so that's the reason why when you see it complete it will have the wheels on the inside and look I've already tried it and it's pretty stable with the wheels that way but you'll see a little bit later on and what I'm doing here is I'm actually securing the cast the wheels to that black uh, sort of triangular bracket or semi-triangular bracket if you like with uh, I think there are M10 nuts and those tools there you see the um, the, the spanner and the the hex tools there um, they're all provided by track racer so you don't really need any tools other than I had obviously a ruler, uh, a pair of side cutters for um, later on when you, when you do your your uh, cable management, and also a pair of multi grips there to break little tabs off so you can allow the the corner profile uh, connectors to connect properly when they're not actually sitting in the the uh, the gutter of the the profile. The reason why I'm undoing this one is because I actually put it I put it on the wrong way around. Um, I did do a couple of mistakes building this, but everything is trial and error, and the only way you can get things right is through a little bit of error and you know pay a bit more attention sometimes and you get it right the first time, obviously. This is where the ruler comes in handy just to ensure that everything is in pretty much perfect alignment. I'm just making sure that the wheels are the same length from the end, so or the same distance from the end, or from either end, from the front and back. I wasn't given any guidance as to how far I should put them, whether you know, whether it was a hundred mil or two hundred mil. So I, I just took a guess and placed them at around about 100 mil from the rear and about 100 mil from the front. Yeah, it's a little bit of tightening up of the bolts and the T-nuts. I, I think I didn't do them tied up straight away. I just made them just slightly 
loosen those just so I can slide them if I needed to. And then um, when when I was happy with their position, I would tighten them up completely. And they were done. There we go, just making sure everything's correct and tightening up away we go. See, that's really quick. <laughs> You know, he's putting the T-nuts into the ends, to the end profiles. And sometimes I, I use, oh, that's another tool you can use too, by the way. It was a screwdriver. I forgot to mention that earlier. Now, the screwdriver just helps sort of put, put those T-nuts in. You know, you sort of, you can lever them in a little bit. And also the screwdriver, screwdriver comes in handy to slide the T-nuts the um, down the uh, pro, or up, up and down the profile. And once I've got everything near the position I want it to, to be, well, I'm going to slide them into position now. And there goes one of the, I'm going to put on the, one of the end profiles. And also, before I do that, I'm going to secure the, the corner brackets, if, if you like. The right angle brackets. That'll secure the, uh, the short profile to the longer one. And then I'll do that on the other side to finish off the connection. It's out of frame there. Look, I do apologize if my head's cut off or um, you don't see all of me. I did keep a camera in one position for most of the build and I just moved the, um, the rig around so you could see you know, a bit more of what I was doing. There's a couple more of the uh, corner brackets going on. And you can see how they're just about ready to go. And I'm going to secure that uh, piece of shorter profile. To the other side and make that join complete. This part sort of was exciting for me because I felt it was just starting to come together now. And using a good old cardboard box just to bring up the profile a little bit to help me secure the joints together. And like I said, this was actually a pretty exciting moment. I'm going, I was thinking to myself, it's getting there. It's getting there when really it was so far away. I think I was roughly around about an hour into the build doing this. I need to give everybody a heads up that if you have any plans of doing this, put at least two days aside to get this all right because it does take some time to put together. It's not something you're going to do in an hour or two or three or even four. If you can get it done in four hours, I really would congratulate you. But if you knew to building profile or aluminium profile rigs like me, there's no problem with taking your time and enjoying your build. I found that kind of relaxing, even though I got a bit stressed from time to time, hoping that everything comes together well. But it was fun. So here I'm just doing the final touches on the uh, the the corner brackets. It's actually amazing the seating positions that you take on the floor, uh, you know, whether you're kneeling or squatting or whatever, just to get comfortable or you know move yourself into the right position to to put this thing together. Uh, here I've got the um, forty by forty aluminium profiles, which are going to make up the base of the uh for the seating frame pretty much it's where the brackets or the sliders and the brackets will sit on the on the 
rig. The for those of you that don't know, the aluminium profile of this, it's called a, a 80 80 40 or 80 by 40, so it's 40 mils wide by 80 mils high. Uh, but those square ones there, obviously they're 40 mils by 40 mils. So just lining these up, making sure they're going to be correct. There's final adjustments, making sure that the length from one end to the other is the same length as those um, the the 40 by 40 profiles. So I've fast forwarded here now. I've actually secured the seat base to the uh, to the to the rig itself, and this was the tricky part. I found that getting this right, I had to work out the distance between the uh, the ends of the rig itself or the size of the rig to the center and then work my way out that way it was it was tricky because I, I, for some reason it just i just drew a blank and i think i was already two or three hours into the build and i wasn't quite sure how i was going to go about getting this right because uh, unfortunately there wasn't a template uh, where to position uh, the, these two pieces so i just used that and uh, yeah, once I found the center, I just pushed them apart, measured them apart, and it fits fine. You'll find that with a little bit of mathematics and a lot of patience, you'll work your way through it. And that's exactly what I did. Here I'm cutting open the box for the seat sliders. Uh, these took a bit, a bit of time. Once again, I'm, I'm back with the measuring tape and the ruler, <laughs> trying to get that um, that measurement correct. And always remember, <laughs> the winning doubt, always reach for the calculator. <laughs> so now, I found the right position. I found the middle, the middle ground. And I'm securing everything tight. I'm satisfied with that. The next step is to complete the tension of those bolts and also then put on the slider oh, but before you put the slider on these T-nuts have to go in first so here I'm working out what's the best position for the seat sliders and whether if I'm putting them on the right way or the wrong way, but I'm, I'm sure that the way I put them is correct. The the seat will end up quite stable. Uh, and also, the, it was a little bit tricky to try and open these up to slide them back and forth, but there's a little silver lever there that is the actuator, so it allows the the slider to disconnect from the from the uh, from those teeth or the gears to allow it to slide forwards and backwards. And when you when you manipulate that silver uh, lever, you're able to slide the, for, the slider backwards and forwards so you can get access to the holes in the bottom to secure the slider to the, uh, to the seat base. And now this next step, I'm using the ruler to gauge how far I'm going to be positioning the sliders forward from the rear of the uh, from the rear of the rig to make sure they they stay aligned and i've got the tool ready and i'm slowly starting to tighten that up as i make sure the measurement's correct there we go i'm happy with that moving to the next one tighten that up and it's all good now move the sliders back there Make sure they're all aligned correctly. 
tighten those nuts up or the bolts sorry and we're all satisfied all right once I've tightened up all the bolts and I'm just ensuring that these are all lined up or they're the same length from the from the front I'll get the uh, that actuator bar that'll allow the seat sliders to or the seat later on once it's connected to slide backwards and forwards and getting this in is actually quite easy because there's um, a couple of uh, pegs on either side that lines up this and holds that into place as you can see when you when you lift it, it'll go back, and when you lift it and pull it forward, it'll go forward. So now that I've completed the seat slider assembly, it's time to move on to the wheelbase stand. So these, this part, this part here will actually hold the wheel in place. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting on, I'm putting in the the T nuts. And the T-nuts here will hold the, the upright profiles. That will hold the wheel, the wheel stand. And once I've put all the T-nuts in place in the lower part of the rig, I'll continue on to prepare the wheel stand profile, or the upright profiles. Now, so I don't scratch the rig itself, I've gone and found a couple of soft pieces of uh, paper, the wrapping paper that came uh, with with the profile that itself, and that way I won't damage the rig in any way, which is actually quite good, because that's what we want to do. We don't want to damage the rig while we build this. Yep, it's always a matter of uh, finessing and making sure it's all right. Here I've got a couple of angle brackets that will hold the uprights to the side of the rig, and they'll they'll they create a, a nice firm um, uh, connection with with the rig because the the base that they have. Now that's done. I found this really great trick from uh, Barry Rowland from Sim Racing Garage. Um, he said put a like a, a block or something so it helps you hold the upright level with the bottom of the rig. I didn't have a block on hand, but I did have the same cardboard box I used earlier to um, to chuck up underneath the underneath the rig and it. Work the treat. And as you can see, you know, I'm pretty uh, sort of bent around trying to get these secured. It's kind of weird because I felt like I was working in a car, um, which is, in, in a sense, it's a thing that's pretending to be a car, I guess. So it actually makes a lot of sense. Yes. If I had a table, I wouldn't have to be lying down like this. But um, we do what we must to make sure it, everything's built correctly. Even if it means lying down. So I'm just trying to work out here roughly where this needs to be, adjacent to uh, the upright I've already secured on this side, or to you know closest to the camera, and I'm just sliding the T nuts um, in a position so they're ready to be secured, so I don't have to scrape or slide the uh, that whole upright up and down the, the rig and do too much damage. Or do I don't want to do. I want to do as little damage as possible, 
to the rig while I'm making these adjustments. Same thing, using the cardboard box to chuck up that side to make to help the upright stay level with the bottom of the rig. And honestly, that worked that worked really, really well. So now that I've secured the uprights for the wheelbase in place, I'm working on the, the pedal mount or the pedal plate mount. Everyone, some people call it different things. Uh, I'll, we'll go with the pedal plate. So all I'm doing, once again, I'm putting the T-nuts in place and I'll put those small, uh, I think they're 100 mil by the looks of it, uh, profiles. And they'll sit right on top of the, of the rig. And they'll hold the front of the pedal plate in place. Using the user manual is very important. It gives you a guide to what you need to do and uh, that's what it's there for. So obviously I reach for it several times because that's the smart thing to do. If you try and wing something like this, if you think you can get by without using any instructions or anything like that, <laughs> I think you might be pretty disappointed with the way things will turn, turn out. So it's come along quite well and I'm happy with the way it's progressing at the moment. I started this build, uh, I think it was nine o'clock Saturday morning and I am sure that at this point it's around about, I think 6.30 at night. There we are. So I just went around to unbox the, the pedal plate. And there it is behind me. It is absolutely solid. It's, I think, three, no, five mil thick. If not six mil thick from memory. It's a decent, it's a decent size plate. It, it can, yeah. It is more than enough for my Logitech G29 setup that I have on it. Um, yeah. It's very, very strong. Very, very strong. I'm putting, I'm putting the T-nuts in now for the brackets that will hold these long brackets that I'm putting on there that will hold the wheelbase in place. Uh, sorry, not the wheelbase. I do apologise. The pedal plate in place and for some reason I did set these at a really high angle uh, and when I did finish the the rig and I was doing some testing I realized that they were way way too, uh, too steep for the angle of the my, my feet obviously and I was getting sort of little cramps in my my left foot while you know while braking so I did lower it down probably to, I reckon, about half the height that it's at there. And it, it works really well. Very well. By the way, if anyone's wondering, I'm not a Nike sponsor. Or I'm not being sponsored by Nike. So that Nike hoodie that I'm wearing, I'm wearing it because I like it. It's actually very comfortable. Now the pedal plate is secured by eight uh, M8 nuts and bolts. So this thing's not going anywhere anytime soon. With that many, it's gonna stay exactly where it needs to be. So 
So that's done. I think at this point it's around about 7 o'clock at night from memory. And um, I couldn't wait just to get down on the floor and keep doing what I was doing. This is after dinner, obviously. Um, and I just wanted to keep going. Now, I took the pedal plate off because I wanted to... It, the, these, uh, the, the bolts on the side that hold that bracket in place were still loose. That was just a temporary fit. I wanted to see how, how it fits. And once I was happy with that, I was just tightening everything up and then the pedal plate will go back on top and I'll secure that back in place. Obviously, as I said earlier, I'm doing this not for nothing. You know, I, I did it in a sense thinking that this was the right angle that I wanted it at but I was thinking it was going to be a bit too steep and it was actually it was actually it turned out to be a lot steeper than I thought and uh, I think I had enough of squatting down at this point my legs were getting tired so I'll pull it pull the old chair now th this is the chair I used to race on when I was using the um the next level wheel stand and that used to be connected to the wheel stand using zip ties. So here I'm putting on the um, the gear slash handbrake um, assembly. But I did move it across from the left hand side over here to the right hand side um, only once again because of the storing location I didn't want it to hit the wall where I'm storing it when I'm not using it obviously I race on the sim in my lounge room in the family lounge room so I can't just keep the rig always in the, mi in the middle of the, the room people do need to move around and um, I just need to accommodate for everybody not only for myself so anyway, moving forward, here I'm putting on the seat brackets, which I do make a big mistake, and I put them on backwards. Yep, you heard it. I put it on back. I put them on backwards, and I realized that once I put the seat halfway on. <laughs> and you, you'll, you'll see in a minute how it's actually quite... I felt really embarrassed, even though no one was watching me. I felt like such an... Yeah. Anyway... It was, um, once again, it was, it was a learning curve just to prove that it was getting late. Um, I think at this point it was getting close to about 9 o'clock. Yeah, I was questioning which way it was supposed to go and I wasn't thinking very clear. Those larger sides are supposed to go towards the front of the of the rig which is the side that's well the end that's closest to us right now so as i was saying earlier as i was putting on those brackets the brackets are on and i've brought the chair over now in all my excitement thinking yep this is it let's put this chair on not realizing that the brackets are the wrong way around so Effectively, what I had done was I put the left one, left, well, I should put the left side on the right, and on the right side on the left side, which, which in turn is making them back to front. So the chair, the GT chair, is actually quite a nice chair. Sitting in it feels great. Uh, unwrapping it, I was pretty excited, thinking, hey, it's my first sim racing seat. <laughs> it honestly beats sitting in the the office chair that I bought about five years ago. That cushion is firm enough. It's not too hard. It's not too soft. Um... And that, that backing cushion is, is pretty good as well. Yeah, it's not even at this point where I realize it's back to front. It's once I've put on 
I've attempted to put on the second bolt and figured something's not right here. And here's the point where I've turned them around. I've realised, oh, well, wait a second. You've done the wrong thing, Joe. So this is how they're supposed to be, that larger part on the front where you've got extra mounting points and just mounting the seat here. It does weigh quite a bit, the seat, but once you, you take out, even just taking out that, that bottom cushion helps take away a little bit of weight. And of course, it's, all it is is just a matter of lining up all the bolts and it's pretty much done once, once you secure all those bolts in place. So let's hurry this up a little bit. So once again, I'm using the, the box to help prop the seat up, make it easier for myself. Because I, I didn't have any, any help. This is, I think it's around about getting close to maybe 11 o'clock, maybe even 11.30 at night. No, maybe I'm sure it was, it was closer to 11 o'clock at night. Not that it matters anyway. Um, but it was getting late. So once I had those all secured in place, on goes the seatbelt. Uh, the thing is, the seatbelt actually bolts to the rear bolts of the seat and also the, um, the rear bolts of the uh, seat bracket down the bottom. So uh, one by one, I actually undone those bolts to secure the, the seatbelt in, into, into place or the harness into place. So all these little finesses getting the, getting the seatbelt into place and also what I needed to f do towards the end or once I completed securing this in place was lengthen the straps so the straps hang over into the seat a bit more because the seat is elevated um, uh, higher higher up the uh, up the seat brackets. So that's it. Once I'm getting that cushion in, I'm realizing it's just a little bit closer. Making some final adjustments, making sure everything's okay. And I think at this point is when I realized, wait a second, the seat's actually too far back. So I moved everything forward. All I did was loosen up the bolts, which releases the um, the T-nuts the uh, a little bit from the inside of the profile inside the, the channel of the profile and allows you to I was able to slide everything forward a little bit I think by about yeah it looks like by about 100 mil because those brackets were pretty much right towards the back so it made a significant dif difference All right, so once again, I've got the ruler out. I have the ruler uh, trying to make adjustments to make sure that both sides are exactly uh, the same length from the rear of the sim rig. And um, yeah, it, it, without a ruler, it, the thing will be a mess. <laughs> so it makes a big difference.
All right, so it's now Sunday morning. Now I've got the the light on just to shed a bit of light on the uh, on the subject, so to speak. It was a bit of a dreary day outside, um, so I needed some extra light inside the lounge room. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually preparing the wheelbase. So once again, I'm using the uh, aluminium angles on the wheelbase itself, setting them, setting them up, and I'll put it between those uprights and secure that tight. So now I will put the wheelbase in place, and I notice it's just pressing a little bit too tight, so I had to make a couple of adjustments to make it slide um, up and down that uh, gap between the uprights without damaging the insides of the uprights. So I had to loosen those brackets off a little bit to help it fit a bit more easier without putting too much stress pushing outwards on those uprights. Once again, you got to make sure you don't over torque this because you can probably break the aluminium profile. Maybe I've, I've never heard of that happen. I'm just saying to not over tighten it. Once you feel it doesn't want to tighten anymore, just stop. I didn't do that. I'm not saying it because I've done that. What I actually did do, I cross-threaded one of the, the T-nuts, but uh, I did have extra ones. They actually gave me more um, things that I needed in regards to T-nuts and, and, and the uh, M8 bolts, which, which is good because, you know, little mistakes can happen. So it was great to have those extra ones on hand, even though I only cross-threaded one. I think it cross-threaded because what happened was as I was turning it, I think the uh, T-nut sort of slipped and I continued to tighten it, not realising that I was cross turning at the same time. All right, so pretty much that's all tight. I'm making some little adjustments there, sitting in the seat, seeing how close I am, how far it needs to be, you know, if, if it's right, trying to get the, the angle correct. And I'm just making sure that uh, both of those, the height of the um, of the wheelbase is the same as as the other side. I might adjust that in the not too distant future, though. Um, I think it might need to be a little bit higher, but that wheelbase is extremely solid, and once again, it's way more than capable of holding my G29. <laughs> So at this point here, this is where I'm putting on the gear shifter on the left hand side. But I realized that I don't really want it on the left hand side due to the fact of what I mentioned earlier. Now I didn't want I don't want it to be hitting the wall whenever I uh, take the take the sim rig out or put it back. So I did opt to put it over onto the right hand side. So I did waste more than enough time doing this part when I should just say to myself whack it straight over the other side but that's okay once again it's one of those live and learn situations so here we are the rig is pretty much complete there's no cable management yet I haven't done anything but you can see how I put the um, the shift on the right hand side um, we'll take it for a quick spin you can get to see what it's like. And um, yeah, I hope you've actually enjoyed the video, guys. Let's take it for a spin. All right, so here I am strapped up in, or getting strapped in. Very excited, like the 
little boy with a new toy. Yeah, getting strapped into the rig. No, I've already put the seat belt upside down. <laughs> Try to sort myself out. So I'm on a set of Corsa Competizione here, and I'm going to do. Well, I I did a re run on at Bathurst in the 2020 Get Speed BW uh, BTW. Mercedes Benz. I think I had some trouble starting it up there. Anyway, so um, for those of you who have enjoyed the video, uh, please, it'd be great if you give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, it'd be great if you do so as well because it'll help out my channel heaps uh, I really want to continue bringing you more content um, and, uh, and enjoy the journey because I'm going on a new journey now and well, another journey with my sim racing and just want to keep it up and keep going so if you guys can give us a thumbs up and subscribe hit the notification bell too so when I post something new you won't miss anything Okay, uh, if you'd like to watch the rest of this, go right ahead. If not, thanks for joining me. Tonight, I hope you enjoyed the build. hope it was informative. Uh, if there's anything you could comment on, maybe what I did wrong, what I could have, what I could have done better as well. Um, for the next time I, I build another rig one day, let me know. Uh, yeah. Leave a, leave a message in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching everybody and have a great day. See ya. Catch you in the next one.